guys, it is me and I got a haircut. Woohoo! And I like it. And it made me want to make this video. And it is like 10 o'clock at night. And I just got back in my room because I've been taking care of the puppy all day and all this other stuff and getting my hair done and all that. And it's really short, so if I play with it a lot, I apologize because I'm not really used to it being this short yet. So I decided to make a video because. We hadn't chosen a theme yet, and here we are. And I decided I'm going to do question and answer, and I have questions, and I want you all to answer them for your next videos. But first, I didn't show you this last time, but I have a phone, and it has an awesome TARDIS case on it, which I'm trying to get properly in the picture. I can only do it if I do it sideways. Yeah, it's got an awesome TARDIS case, and then when I turn my phone onto the main screen, again, I'm trying to figure this out. It's got, like, Ravenclaw in the background, because I'm just that cool. Because I'm a Ravenclaw. Yeah. I'm a dork. I know. So, I'll answer these questions, and these are the ones that I will pose you. So, I'm going to read them very slowly, so that I can pose them to you then. And the first one is, if a movie was being made about your life, and you could choose the actor or actress to play you, who would you choose and why? Well... I would choose Jessica Alba. Well, okay. My favorite actress and the one that I'd really love to play me is Anna Sophia Robb, but she is way too young, and she's also very, very blonde, and clearly I am not blonde at all, and that would be a really far-fetched person. While Jessica Alba is dark-haired and could easily play me, and I just adore her, and I would just love for her to play me. I know, it might not be the best reason. And I really don't look like her, but I just think that she'd be a really cool person. Um, let's see, what else do we have? What is your favorite season and why? I love the fall. The fall is, like, my favorite season because it's not too hot and it's not too cold. It's usually got that perfect, like, brisk air and that perfect weather. It's the sweatshirt weather, which I love because I love just being able to go out in just a sweatshirt and jeans and be comfortable in that. It's not cold enough that you need a jacket on top of that, and it's not hot enough where a sweatshirt is too hot. Like, you're, it's the most comfortable time of year, and you can have fire pits, and you can actually, like, enjoy the weather, which I really like. And my lips might be out of sync, so I just hope that this is actually working, but it looks like they're out of sync. Oh, well. Um... What traditional stereotype would you classify yourself as? Um, what's weird is I don't really fit any traditional stereotypes. I guess, like, I'm a nerd, but that's not technically, I guess, a traditional one because nerds are different in all different realms and things. But, um, of the, like, the typical high school stereotypes, I wasn't popular. I wasn't a jock. I was kind of... I guess I'd be an outcast in a way, because I didn't really fit into any of the other categories. I mean, I was a choir kid, but I also didn't fit the typical choir kid. I was all over the place. Like, I played softball freshman year. I was in choir, or chorus, is what we called it, not choir. I did theater arts, I did stage crew, but at the same time, like, I wasn't so into that world. I did creative writing. Like, I was on the creative side, the artistic side, but I really don't think I fit any, like, specific stereotype. So, I'm not really sure. What group did you belong to in high school? Well, that, I basically just answered with the stereotype question. Um, you are planning a dinner party. This is a fun question. You are planning a dinner party. Which three celebrities, historical figures, fictional characters past or present, dead or alive, would you add to your guest list to keep the dinner talk interesting? Well, for historical figures, I would totally invite Edgar Allan Poe, just because he is just such an interesting person. Like, he is one of my favorite authors. I adore him, and I just think the way that his mind works, I would just love to have him there just to, to just see how it happens. And... Who else? I think Gandalf from Lord of the Rings would be an awesome person to have at a dinner party. Just because Edgar Allan Poe and Gandalf, 
that would be quite interesting. And then the third person. Hmm. This is a fun one, but it's also very tough because there's so many people I would want to throw in here. There's so many people that I would love to invite to a dinner party, but I can only pick three. So I'm going to try to pick one from each category. So I said I did a fictional character, I did a historical figure, so a celebrity. Hmm. Mm, that's the tough one, because I'm not really big on celebrities. Hmm. Who would I choose celebrity-wise? Let's see. I think that... Celebrity-wise, I might choose somebody really random. Like... Katy Perry. How interesting would she be at a dinner party? With Gandalf and Edgar Allan Poe, you have all these extremes. It could be really interesting and make for a very interesting dinner party. Okay. If you could be any fictional character in a book, movie, TV show, etc., who would you be? Again, this is a tough one because there's a lot of fictional characters that it would be pretty damn cool to be. And normally I would say I'd love to be Peter Pan, but... As much as I love Peter Pan, the character of Peter Pan annoys me because he's a typical, like, young boy and he can be really arrogant and he doesn't want to grow up and while I don't want to grow up, I also don't want to be Peter Pan. I would be one of the Lost Boys, but, but even then it's kind of like, I don't know. So I actually said that I wanted to be Lucy from the Chronicles of Narnia because I would love to go in Narnia. There's always an adventure, there's always something. And time goes by so, so different. It's so different there. Like, in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, they went in and they were kids and they didn't think, that, like, they grew up there. But then when they left the wardrobe, they were back to being kids again. And it's really cool. And, like, I just love all of the allegory in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe and all of the Chronicles of Narnia books. And I just would love to go to Narnia. So, and Lucy was just the spirit of Narnia. Like, she embodied that. She was the one that got them there and... It was her, and so I would really, really love to be Lucy. What book has influenced you greatly, and how? Okay, this is actually pretty easy, and I have so many books that I could say, but there's one book that truly, truly I adore, and all of the quotes from it are on my Facebook, and I just think it was a really life-changing book, and it's a book that I'd love to teach. That is Looking for Alaska by Don Green. And, you know, John Green is one of the Vlog Brothers, and I have seen all the collab channels because I had found the Vlog Brothers channel. Um, Looking for Alaska is basically, without giving away and making spoilers, if anybody on this channel actually wants to read it that hasn't read it, I don't know if any of you have read it, is a book about a boy who is obsessed with famous people's last words. And he is in high school and he decides to go off to a boarding school to try to seek his great perhaps before he dies to find his great perhaps because one someone's last words where I go to seek a great perhaps and he wanted to find that before he died and even though he was young he felt that it was important so he goes to this boarding school and the people he meets shape him and you get kind of to see how and be shaped with him and there's two sections of the book. There's a before and an after. And I can't really tell you what it's before and what it's after without giving away a lot of the book. But it, it, it's a book that has made me, it made me laugh, it made me cry, it made me feel all these emotions. And I feel like when a writer can do that, it's amazing. And I also think what John Green does that is just so amazing for me is that instead of just telling you, like, this is what this character is, and this is why this character is this way, he shows you. Like, he makes you see the character instead of reading what the character is, which I think is really, really cool and a really good thing as a writer, and I envy that, but I can't do it myself, which is unfortunate. Um, so I would suggest that book to anybody. It is just amazing, and you can check out some of the quotes from it on Facebook. And then, if you were a natural element, would you rather be fire or water? Well, I'm a water sign, I'm a Pisces, so I would much rather be water, because water is malleable, it can move through crevices and, and get into places, 
While fire is more destructive, and I'm not really a destructive person, I am a very, very adaptable person, and so I really don't want to be fire. I'd rather be water. And this one was one that I came up with that I thought would be fun for us to answer as Doctor Who fans. If you could choose one doctor to travel with, which one would you choose and why? For me, it's always, and I mean always, going to be Eleven. He was the doctor that got me into Doctor Who, and then I went back and watched the rest. And I just love him. Like, I just think his quirkiness, his insanity, like, it all just amazes me. And I think he would just be so fun to travel with. And he's always so, like, out there. And I just love him. Like, I, I envy Amy Pond because I would love to be in her shoes where she met him as a little girl, and then he came back, and she was there, and she got to travel with him all this time, and, and just, I envy her. We'll see if that changes, depending what the hell happens this next upcoming season, but Amy Pond would be my ideal choice. And that's it for the questions. So I'd like to see your answers to these questions for the next video. Question answer videos! Aren't they fun? And we can do these more often because I have a whole list of questions you didn't use yet that I have. I just chose a few of them to ask. So I'm hoping I'll see some of your videos soon. Yeah! And this is my haircut! Woohoo! And I'm going to put a really surprise clip on the end of this video, possibly. Or the next video. I don't know, but I did get a clip of my puppy. But I don't know if it's really a good clip, so we'll see. But I love you all. Heart. And I'm sorry if this is moving and if my lips are out of sync. It's just on my lap because if I put it on the bed, it, my laptop tends to overheat when I'm using the camera. So I couldn't really do that. But does it really matter? Because you're going to get this video and it's going to be awesome. And oh, look. Um, you can see my angel picture behind me. It's my guardian angel that my best friend Kamali drew for me. And because I have my obsession with angels because I write about them. And my whole thing is, um, whenever I get freaked out, I say as long as there's angels around me and there's angels watching me, I'm okay. So I have the guardian angel picture that my best friend drew me. There's actually two of them, but the one you can see better at this angle. They're both on this, like, behind me. And that's what you can see here, because I'm actually sitting on my bed, because it's comfortable. Yeah. Again. Heart you guys. Bye. Until next time.